Kia ora guys, welcome back to the 2.5 Genetic Variation and Change video series. This is video 2. So in this video you're going to be learning about genes, alleles, and genetic variation. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to distinguish between genes and alleles and describe genetic variation. You should also be able to list the sources of genetic variation. So the inheritable traits or characteristics an organism has is determined by their genes. A gene is a short length of DNA found on a chromosome that codes for a particular protein. Each protein, by itself or together with other proteins, then causes the expression of a particular trait. This could be hair curliness, flower color, eye color. The diagram here shows the relationship between the cell the nucleus, the chromosome, and the genes on the chromosome. Each of the 23 types of chromosomes in humans carry a unique combination or a unique set of genes. So this chromosome 1 carries a unique combination of genes that's not seen in these other chromosomes. This chromosome 2 also carries its unique genes that's not seen anywhere else. And across these 23 pairs of chromosomes in humans, there are around 20,000 genes. All individuals inherit two copies of each gene. One copy comes from mum, and it's located in this maternal homologue. And one copy comes from dad, and is located on this paternal homologue. The homologues in each homologous pair carries the same gene in the same locus. Now locus, or loci if plural, describes the exact location of that gene on a chromosome. Each of the two copies of any given gene could be the same, or there could be different versions of the same gene. So here you've got a gene, and let's say this gene is for eye color. This version of this gene could be for blue eyes, but this version of this gene could be for brown eyes. This picture here shows the relationship between gene, protein, and the physical trait or characteristic we see on the person. So here is a gene for hair texture. This is the locus of the gene here, and there's more than one version of the gene. There's this version of the gene in green that produces this protein that produces the curly hair trait. Whereas this version of the gene in purple produces this protein that produces this straight hair trait. These different versions of a gene are called alleles. Alleles are alternative forms or variations for the same gene. For example, eye color is the gene, but blue, green, and brown are the alleles. For any gene, a person may have the same two alleles known as homozygous. So for example, they could have curly, curly alleles. Or they could have two different alleles, which is known as heterozygous. They could have curly and straight alleles. The genotype is the combination of alleles, so curly, curly or curly straight, and they can be expressed as a phenotype, what we actually observe. So here is a picture of myself and my parents, who I got my two sets of chromosomes from. Let's look again at the gene example of hair texture. My mum has curly hair, so she probably passed down a curly allele to me. And my dad has straight hair, and he's probably passed down the straight hair allele to me. So the genotype, or the combination of alleles I got, was probably a curly hair allele and a straight hair allele. Because these are two different alleles, it means that my genotype is heterozygous. But the phenotype, or the observable feature you see in my hair, is straight hair. So it's possible that I inherited a curly hair allele, but what you see on me is straight hair. That's my phenotype. If I inherited both straight hair and curly hair alleles, how come my hair is naturally straight? How come it's not curly? That's because alleles can either be dominant or recessive. A dominant allele is always expressed, 
even if only one copy is present. Dominant alleles are represented by a capital letter. For example, the dominant brown allele is represented by a capital B. A recessive allele is only expressed if a dominant allele is not present. Recessive alleles are represented by a lowercase letter. For example, the recessive blue allele is represented by a lowercase b. This individual here has a heterozygous genotype and their phenotype will be brown eyes because they've got the dominant brown eye allele. If we go back to the gene for hair texture, the straight hair allele is probably dominant because it's expressed even if I inherited the curly hair allele from my mum. And the curly hair allele is probably recessive because it's only expressed if the dominant allele of straight hair is not present. So let's go through some examples of genes and alleles. Here is the gene for eye colour. And in this example, there are two alleles. The brown eye allele, which is dominant, so it gets the capital letter B. And then there's the blue-eyed allele, which is recessive, so it gets the lowercase b. Here is the gene for handedness. Right-hand dominance is the dominant allele, so it gets the capital R. And left-hand dominance is recessive, so it gets the lowercase letter, the small r. Here, the gene is the ability to roll your tongue. Not being able to roll your tongue is dominant, so it gets the capital T and being able to roll your tongue is recessive, so it gets a small t. I just realized I've got these two pictures the wrong way around. Being able to roll your tongue meant, is meant to be on this side, and not being able to roll your tongue is meant to be on this side. And here is the gene for the ability to hyperextend your thumb, also known as a hitchhiker's thumb. Being able to hyperextend your thumb is dominant, so it gets a capital H, and not being able to hyperextend your thumb is recessive, so it gets a lowercase h. This picture is here to show you the relationship between homologous chromosomes, genes, and alleles. Here we see a homologous pair of chromosomes for a flowering plant species. How do I know it's a homologous pair? Well, they're the same length, and they contain the same gene at the same locus or location on the chromosome. This gene is for the protein that's responsible for flower color. And you can see that this gene is located on the same spot on each chromosome. This flower color gene has two alleles, the allele for purple flowers and the allele for white flowers. But this picture doesn't tell us anything about which allele is dominant and which one's recessive. This picture shows us the different genotype possibilities for eye color. We know that the allele for brown eyes is dominant and the allele for blue eyes is recessive. So if individual A has a heterozygous genotype of one blue eye allele and one brown eye allele, they will have the phenotype of brown eyes. If individual B has a homozygous dominant genotype of two brown alleles, they will have the phenotype of brown eyes. And if individual C has a homozygous recessive genotype of two blue eye alleles, they will have the phenotype of blue eyes. But we all know that eye color is more complex than just brown and blue. That's because there's genetic variation or the differences in DNA sequences between individuals within a population. These differences in DNA sequence leads to different genotypes and this can be observed as differences in phenotypes. Genetic variation is clearly visible in the domestic dog species. So all of the dogs pictured here have different fur colors, fur lengths, eye colors, face shape, and personalities. So genetic variation leads to phenotypic variation, variation in the traits we observe in the species. Here's another example of how genetic variation can lead to phenotypic variation. These are frogs in the same species, but they all look different in terms of size, color, and body shape. Genetic variation can lead to phenotypic variation. 
These snapdragon flowers also show how genetic variation can lead to phenotypic variation because there's three flower colours available, white, pink and red. And even different heights of people are an example of how genetic variation leads to phenotypic variation. So the genetic variability between individuals is what makes us all different from each other. Brothers and sisters may look similar to each other, but there are always significant differences between them unless they're absolutely identical twins. So how does genetic variation come about? What are the sources of this genetic variation? Meiosis, or sexual reproduction, is a major source of genetic variation because it shuffles the existing genetic material into new combinations of gametes, the sperm and egg. As part of sexual reproduction, there is also mate selection and random fertilization, but we won't talk about this to a great extent in the standard. The other source of variation comes from mutations that occur in DNA. This is what video three is going to be about. Well done, you've reached the end of the video. So by now you should be able to distinguish between genes and alleles, describe genetic variation, and list the sources of genetic variation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.